The day before my last podcast, Secretary Nielsen and President Trump had a meeting which resulted in Secretary Nielsen turning in her resignation. There is some speculation as to whether or not this was a voluntary resignation or whether the President had come out and asked her for her to resign immediately. But this was something that I wanted to cover as soon as I saw it. I started looking into it as soon as I turned the cameras off from the podcast, and I started to notice a pattern as I was starting to search through the internet for any information as to what had happened in this meeting. There was very little in the way of content on any of the mainstream outlets, and some of the conservative pundits and some of the alternative media figures were talking about it a little bit, but there didn't seem to be much information on that side either. Instead, as you started looking into what had happened, you started to see a very, very strange pattern and something that was very unsettling. Before we go too far into that, though, let's look at some of the basics of what happened. As I mentioned at the open of the video, on Sunday there was a meeting between President Trump and Department of Homeland Security head Kirsten Nielsen, after which Nielsen decided that it was time for her to turn in her resignation. The general consensus right now is the fact that she was fired because she disagreed with the president openly over the effectiveness of closing down the border entirely, and there's some merit to what she said in there. We talked about that when we talked about the wall, we talked about that when we talked about DACA, and there is some general consensus as to how that would affect any sort of immigration at all. In the resignation letter, Nielsen did point out the fact that she hopes that the next secretary has more of a cooperation with Congress than she enjoyed, a sticking point that made her job and the job of the Department of Homeland Security almost impossible, as immigration and the situation at the border has been a major sticking point with Congress since the beginning of this young presidency. The news cycle is moving along very quickly, and it's starting to shift back into Russian collusion and William Barr again. It's almost impossible for anybody to look back and focus on this story anymore, but when I was doing research to try and talk about this story, I started to notice something almost immediately. It was very disturbing. As you can see from my Google search page, which was the actual Google search page that I used when I started researching this, one of the first mainstream headlines out there from a mainstream news source read simply, Cancel Kirsten Nielsen from the opinion page of the New York Times. And this was the beginning of a series of articles that I saw that were very Orwellian and dystopian in nature and all seemed to say the very same thing. Thing. The New York Times, the Washington Post, the Boston Globe, many local sources, and many more sources in general have all come out to say almost the exact same thing. And that is the fact that because of some of the border policies that were put in place, because of the fact that Nielsen was simply following orders, and just for the fact that Nielsen worked under the Trump administration, Nielsen should never be allowed to participate in society again. Now, there have been some threats out there, of course, to boycott any university that would allow her to speak, and that seems to be the case for anybody from the conservative side, but the case of Nielsen seems to go even further. In addition to threats to boycott any university that would allow Nielsen onto their campus to speak, there has also been a large amount of threats to put financial and social pressure on any business anymore that would hire Nielsen at all, and this includes security firms, consulting firms for security, and law firms, as Nielsen is a lawyer as well. I found this tweet from Don Winslow, however, that does take this all one step further, and I'd like to share that with you. Winslow tweets, any publisher offering a book deal to Kirsten Nielsen, a.k.a. at Sec Nielsen, better buckle up. And I really mean buckle up. Me and every other author I know will be vigorously exercising our freedom of speech rights across social media and elsewhere. So with tweets like this, there are even threats out there to try and bar Nielsen from going into self-employment or trying to sell her story to the media. Taunts about employment are nothing new in a political atmosphere. There are a lot of calls to put a lot of people in Congress back into the private sector and make them work for a living again. To be more specific, there are a lot of calls out there to make Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez a bartender again. This is nothing new, but... 
what we are seeing here for Nielsen, and especially if a lot of this is followed through with, which I really fear that it's going to be, this is really Orwellian and dystopian in nature. This goes further than trying to make somebody just a pariah for the fact that they were associated with one person or another. These people are out there trying to deperson Kirsten Nielsen just for the fact that she worked under Trump. One of the disturbing thoughts about this is wondering whether or not this can go further. Can this really stop at the point that people are calling for right now, or will it go further than that? I know there are threats out there to put social and political pressure on any business out there that would hire Kirsten Nielsen. But as I said before, what if she goes into self-employment? What if she completely self-publishes? Nielsen is a woman of means, and especially after being in such a high position of the government, she's got to have some money saved up to where she could self-publish a book, go out and sell it. Are there going to be threats out there to people who go out and buy this book, whether they buy it from Nielsen herself personally, whether she puts it on Amazon, or well, whether she puts it out on the web in any other way, shape, or form? She does have the means to do so, and... This could be a very dangerous situation for anybody who wants to consume that form of media. All in all, much like the Kavanaugh case, much like the case of anybody else who's been involved with Trump, and much like Trump himself ever since he went into the government, there are no real indictable criminal charges. We just finished up the Mueller report and found out that there weren't any indictable charges. There were some dirty people in the administration, but they were indicted, tried, convicted, and are serving their time through the proper channels. But, as in the case of Kirsten Nielsen and so many other people in this administration at this point, there are no indictable offenses out there, and yet these people are indicted, tried, convicted, and sentenced to death by depersoning in the court of social media. And that's a really scary point for us to get to in this country, because... If it happens to people like Nielsen or other people who were in the administration, people who have means to defend themselves, it can happen to any of the rest of us, and not all of us are going to have any sort of means to defend ourselves in such a court of social media without the government being able to protect us and offer us the rights that we are granted by our creator and guaranteed in our constitution. It's a scary time in this country, and I pray that we never get to that point. What do you think about Secretary Nielsen's firing, and what do you think about the reaction to it? I always welcome a thoughtful and positive discussion in the comments section below, and especially over on Twitter. That is at Ed's blog Twitter, with a one in place of the eye. Thanks, as always, for listening to this show and supporting this channel. And remember, never take the words of bloggers, podcasters, or journalists as gospel. Find all the facts and draw your own conclusions. Take care.